Uh, so they visited the, var the Forester at MIT and were convinced they could be made to work for the kind of global problems which uh, interested the club. An agreement was signed with the research team at MIT in 1970, uh, July, and the finance proved to uh, was provided a grant of $200,000 in July of 1970. That was a lot of money. That uh, Piste had uh, had obtained from the Volkswagen Foundation. <laughs> nice, the Volkswagen Fiat Foundation. Ooh, good to be a Nazi. That uh, we were touching. I was touching about the Nazis, but I am a Nazi. Oh yeah. Oh, I don't even know if I can go on with this, ladies and gentlemen. So much evil in here. Um, oof. Move ahead. There's a lot of papers. So then the limits to growth. All right. In 1972, the Club of Rome pop published uh, the limits to growth. The Club of Rome's depopulation agenda, exposed by their own documents. Uh, this is a report to the Club of Rome, 1972, by Danella H. Meadows, <laughs> as I re reported her name before. Uh, our world model was built specifically to investigate five major trends of global concern. Accelerating industrialization. Oh, really? Rapid population growth, widespread malnutrition, depletion of non-renewable resources, and the deteriorating environment. If the present growth rates in world population, industrialization, pollution, food production, and resource depletion continue unchanged, the limits to growth on this planet will be reached sometime within the next 100 years. The most probable result will be a rather sudden and uncontrollable decline in both population and industrial capacity. No, I think it's more like the Rockefeller, you know, putting cancer in the vaccines and all the other stuff and the other evil and the tyranny that they're doing. Uh, this is unbelievable, but these, this is the limits to growth. If you read that, it's just outrageous. So they're all talking about this. Meanwhile, we're all dying of cancer. Everyone in their 40s gets cancer, their 50s. No, it's a no big deal anymore. Everybody that's dying in their 50s and 40s and 60s while unemployed, excuse me, while Social Security is being pushed past 65. Oh, yeah. Look up the statistics. It's a, a, a tremendous amount of people in that age group are dying. Now, what happens? if the, the, Due to this Rockefeller fraud, when they got the, the, the families to divorce, okay? Now the divorce is done, okay? Okay, the, the divorce, they're divorced, all right? Maybe there's alimony, maybe there's not, whatever. Okay, it breaks up the family. The Social Security benefits generally go to the are no longer, uh, the spouse is no longer eligible unless they were married for a long time, okay? So, the, again, it goes to single persons. So the single people, they die before 67, man, that money never goes, they're, they're done. They don't get shit, they get gazelle, nothing. They get an Illuminati eye, that's what they get. Ugats, 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 all right? That's part of the plan, ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately, we're probably not going to reach that plateau. We've all been poisoned. I mean, I only woke up when I was 40. God knows, man, I've had, uh, I had vaccines when I was a kid, and most people did. Um, you know, my son had vaccines until he woke up, now and then, until I woke up, and, he, you know, I, 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 that's it. No more vaccines. He's 13. He's going to be 13. They still want to give him vaccines. He's 13. I didn't have vaccines. I never had a vaccine past 6 or 7. So, like, why the hell would he? Anyway, again, there's all this stuff, the flu shots. It's just, it's just, um, it, you have to, the tyranny is there. It's it's obvious. And it's all put into these documents. Bell, bell, uh, it, it's, it's bred into these, do from these documents. It's where it comes from. This is why they're doing it. This is why we're not crazy people. That's why we're not crazy people, that, conspiracy theorists. No, it's there. It's there. They write that they're doing it, and they're showing you that they're doing it, and they're telling you that they're doing it. Limits to growth. Read it. Take the time to read it. It is quite a quite a bit of uh, paperwork. Um, the actual book is it's, it's a nice book, but uh, decent sized book. But uh, look over the. I don't want to read from the statistics, but it basically to break it all down as they go down into how. We are eating away the world, and we are too big, and, there's, and the world will not be able to sustain us in a nutshell, and that we're polluting the world.
All right, humanity is disease, okay? That's what they believe. That's why we must be killed. And they say within 100 years, then they got the global warming fraud on top of that. I haven't even gone into that. This is just talking about the Club of Rome. Uh, another overview of uh, some of the case histories of the Club of Rome. On uh, the 30th of April in 1981, there was a disclosure of the existence of the Club of Rome, identifying it as a committee of the 300 subversive body. This was the first mention of both of the organizations in the United States. And uh, it is a uh, warning written basically to, uh, issued by the Bavarian government when the secret plans of the Illuminati uh, came, came out in this time. Uh, this was when Aldo Moro was, was assassinated and all of that. It was a lot of that. In Sicily, there was a lot of unrest going on there, but there was also some other, there was just activities and power struggles going on there. And, of course, we have the murder of the Pope. Uh, he was poisoned. Um, he wasn't going to go along with uh, the banking ideas, and we had the whole banking scandal with Carlo, whatever his name was, from the Bank of the Vatican, found hanging in Rome, in the Vatican. Uh, it's all, again, history and on record. Uh, it's all connected. <clears throat> okay, um... So you really need to, uh, to research about some of these things that I've just mentioned. As I was just mentioning, uh, it, uh, it would be recalled that Prime Minister Aldo Moro was kidnapped by the Red Brigades in 1978 and subsequently brutally shot to death. It was the trial members of the Red Brigades that turned uh, on them, testifying to the fact that they knew of high-level U.S. involvement. No shit. In the plot to kill Moro. When threatening Moro, Kissinger was obviously not carrying out U.S. foreign policy, but rather acting according to instructions received from the Club of Rome, the foreign policy arm of the Committee of 300. The witness who delivered the bombshell in open court was a close associate of Moro's, Garrado Garzani, and his explosive testimony was broadcast over Italian television and radio on November 10, 1982. It was also printed in several, Itali several Italian newspapers, and yet the vital information was suppressed in the U.S. Of course, no one ever heard that. That's why this is Truth Talk News. This is why you hear it now. Please, I always find the stuff they will never tell you. I dig this stuff up. I take the time to do the research to find this information that nobody speaks about. This is it. I mean, it's right out in your eyes. It's happening here in America, and nobody looks at it. If they report it, they report it once and it gets backburned. You'll never hear it again. And you got to dig for it. You got to find the CBS article uh, and the uh, uh, CBS uh, interview, or you got to find the, the the thing that they the, they did 20 years ago that they didn't remember about. They, they, they are not they're not in foul. It's there. They they can't erase it, but they they don't have to broadcast it. They don't have to emphasize it. I mean, when they want you to get something, they don't you remember when they wanted to drill in a message hitting that building with the planes for, I mean, I just, all you, you can't, you couldn't even watch television. Because all you would do is turn on the TV and for, for fucking months, all you saw was planes hitting the goddamn Trade Center. You remember that? That's mind control, okay? They're not going to tell you, they're not going to broadcast that, that fucking Kissinger's a criminal hired to kill Aldo Moro. He's a war criminal for many other things over and over again. No, no, they don't talk about that. They don't t report that over and over. Well, Kissinger has been, been arrested. Kissinger has been arrested. Or Bush has been convicted of war crimes with Blair in Malaysia. No, they don't convict. You know, and they call that a kangaroo court. You know, because these people are they're getting away with murder. They're killers. They're they're the elite. They think they own the world, and they will own the world if we let them. So anyway, on November tenth, nineteen eighty-two. It, it did actually get printed in several Italian newspapers, so you can again find this information. It is out there on the internet. Google it in there, or or do do searches. Search. I use Start Page, so they don't doesn't leave any trail. Uh, November tenth, nineteen eighty two.
printed in several Italian newspapers. So you look, Google some or, uh, star page uh, Italian newspapers, Aldo Moro, um, Corrado Gorzini, New World Order, something like that. It'll come up. I've, I've, I've gotten articles from there. Okay. Um, now those famous bastions of freedom um, also uh, were compellingly had to write the no, uh, but of course we were not told. In America, you know, this type of information cannot be given out. So there was absolutely no coverage at all. The Washington Post, New York Times did not think it was important to even print a single line of Corzoni's testimony. They reported the trial, they reported it, but not one single line of the testimony or mention of the fact that he named uh, Kissinger and others. Interesting, right? That's because they own it. It's like the movie Network. It wasn't. It was true. The corporations took over. Boom. That's it. We got you. Nor was it carried by the news or any wire services or television stations. The whole thing. The fact that Aldo Moro had been a leading politician for decades and he was kidnapped in broad daylight in the spring of '78 and all his bodyguards were butchered in cold blood was not deemed newsworthy, even though Kissinger stood accused as an accomplice to these crimes. It's amazing. They were talking about Princess Grace in 1980 at the time. She had been, she had died and supposedly crashed her car, and who knows what the story is behind that whole thing, ladies and gentlemen. I don't, I have no research knowledge on it. Probably was an accident. I don't, I don't know. I didn't, I. But you know, you never can tell with these, with these, these deaths, these mysterious deaths. You know, a lot of times they, you know, I got to tell you, there's a high percentage of these mysterious deaths, or or high profile deaths that are, are questionable. Uh, that much I'll, I'll, I'll attest to on Truth Talk News. So, um, it was around that same time, so the media was covering uh, Princess Grace. All right. Um, yeah. Let's see what else I can go on this. Uh, the Committee of 300 is uh, behind the whole thing as well. I should to a thing directly on that. That is, uh, again, these 300, similar like the Bilderberg, or Bilderberg organization. It's a think tank that uh, sets agenda. Now, after President Reagan was elected, uh, there was an important meeting in Washington in December of 1980 under the auspices of the Club of Rome and the Social uh, Socialist International. Now, this is what happened. Now, they started putting in the Soviet-style education system, which we have now, which is the this, like, dumbing down of society, started right then and there. In fact, Charlotte Iserbeet, who was the uh, head of the Department of Education, went to Reagan saying once with this, revealing this, that all of this curriculum ideas and all the ideologies and things that they're putting in there, it's Soviet style, and that, you know, it's dumbing down the P. It's just like, it's just ridiculous, you know. Uh, and it, it, reducing test scores and all of this stuff and, let, let, you, know, let, you know, not letting people fail, uh, pushing them through, uh, not helping them, uh, that, that whole thing. And she really got in, in, in a tither about it, and Reagan fired her in 1981. Shortly after he was uh, his assassination attempt, you know, must have ruffled some feathers, and uh, things had to change. And she was going to ruffle more, and that's it. I can't afford that anymore. Nope, got to play the game. Got to play ball. Got to play ball. The Gipper, you know, got to do take one for the Gipper there. All right. Anyway, um, now these uh, organizations were directly responsible to the Committee of 300. And the main agenda was to formulate ways and means of how to neutralize the Reagan presidency. A group plan was adopted, and as we look back, it was perfectly clear that the plan that the conspirators agreed to follow had been very successful. In order to get an idea of how vast and how all-pervasive of this conspiracy, it would be appropriate at this point to name this, the goals set by the Committee of 300 for the pending conquest and control of the world. There are at least 40 known branches of the Committee of 300, and we shall be listing them all together with a description of their functions. Once this is studied, it will become easy to understand how one central conspiratorial body is able to operate so successfully and why that no power on earth can withstand their onslaught against the very foundations of a civilized, progressive world based on freedom of the individual, especially as it is declared in the United States Constitution. 